mystical conspiracy of the masters i choose this topic to explain how does the master continue to help the seekers along the path and also i will speak how does a person enter into life beyond with death the day buddha was to leave the body someone said that now you will not be alive anymore and we will miss you so much for lives to this buddha responded but i died long ago and for the last 40 years i was not aware that i was alive the day enlightenment happened i died but buddha was really alive. the day enlightenment happened to him he died outwardly and thus he became really alive buddha was so alive so relaxed and so spontaneous he had no fear of death buddha had attained to deathlessness in sufism we use two words fana and baka these are the two shores of the river river bed cannot flow without two shores on either side but those shores are not rivers what flows between these two shores is river and river is a continuous flow when a seeker his ego is dissolved he dissolves in the ocean of ocean of divinity that the master is he attains to the state of fana look at the river it flows constantly along the way it swerves it changes its direction many times but its journey is to merge with the ocean before merging with the ocean it is turbulent it is going to lose its identity its total entity and from now onwards it will no more be known as river thames nile ganges amazon or any other name drop by drop it merges into the ocean the moment it merges into the ocean it becomes ocean then another thing happens the moment the river drop dissolves itself into the vastness of the ocean then ocean lends its magnanimity to the river drop first step when the drop loses itself into the ocean and second happens the ocean which is totality which contains the water of all the rivers lends its magnanimity its quality to the river drop the water that was known by its own existence taste name etc is no more known by that it acquires the taste of the ocean the water becomes salt it is now known as ocean ocean this presence this happening we call in sufism as baka and sufism is a bridge between these two shores fana and baka when a master really attains to enlightenment in fact he becomes a bridge between fana and baka with fana baka is not far off but the journey is still has to continue first when a river drop merges into the ocean it loses its form name everything by which it was known by then is lost it is no more known by the individual name or anything that is why masters give a new name to begin a new beginning because you had been identified with this name or that name this form many mask faces you had continued on it on yourself with this the first show all that past identities are dissolved into the ocean fana means your past identities the faces that were known to you vanishes and you discover your original face original face when you were born nothing was written 
the slate was clean you were simply consciousness you were simply noor it is said that when allah subhanahu wa taala created man and put his ruh into it because of darkness it came back then he took out some of the noor from the forehead of hazrat a paigambar sallallahu alaihi wasallam and then put the ruh inside it stayed in order for ruh to stay in the darkness of the cage that body mind and intellect creates it needs light it needs noor it needs awareness all these are synonyms and when a master attains to the state of enlightenment or Christhood or awakening his connection with the physical being body mind and intellect severs there is no connectivity between the two he knows very well that i am not the body i am not the mind i am not the intellect these are the coverings these are the mechanics that i use i am not computer but i know how well to use the computer the laptop because it is necessary for me to commune the meditation session with you when i am with the computer i am using the me- mechanism the device the recording system which is also a part of my laptop adobe audition the audio recording mechanism the mechanism to edit the audio remove the disturbances noises unwanted sounds then there is a another device that converts this audio into video all these i am familiar with i used them to transport myself from one place to another i use another device all these things so to my body is a device my mind is a device through which when the consciousness or the noor passes through that mechanism of the mind it forms sentences it creates the gaps between the two words and a communion is established with you these are the mechanism that i use but one day these mechanism have to be abandoned i take the mechanism for one hour use it or whatever be the duration of the meditation session i use it and after that that device is turned off and is not in use anymore this does not mean that device is not there but a moment comes when the desire that device becomes outdated it has to be replaced by another you replace your car with another who is replacing that your awareness your noor decides that this mechanism has become outdated i cannot use it anymore i needed a upgraded version of this car the vehicle ipad iphone these are all devices that we use for various purposes communication master uses his body and mind as a mechanism to commune with the seekers these are ephemeral they have been given a certain lifetime life span when that comes to an end the master knows the time is approaching for me to leave this world but before that he makes the arrangement to send his beloved seekers to other living masters it happened about one master when he was leaving the world to enter into the alami gap he want to send his disciple to the right master how will seeker will choose the right master he created a parable of cone and he told his seekers his disciples that i have an inheritance of 17 camels i want these 17 camels to be divided into three of you the first one gets half of the camels half half of the 17 the next one gets the one third of the camels 
and the remaining two will go to the third disciple. Camel is a living organism. It cannot be divided into portions. It has to be divided given whole. Seventeen camels to be divided into half, one third and remainder of the two. They could not solve this parable. And the master put the condition the last one will get two. First one gets one, half of the camels, second gets one third. They looked all around. They could not. They went to this wise and that wise person of the time. No one could solve this riddle. Ultimately, they reached to a master. He said, That's very simple. I can divide this egg as per the instruction of your master. You have 17 camels. I add one of my camels. That becomes 18. I give first one the half of the camels, which is 9. The second one gets one third, which is six. Six plus nine is fifteen. The last one gets two, seventeen. And he said, I take back my camel. So the seventeen camels are divided into three disciples as per the instruction of the master who has entered the army gap. A master lends his being to the disciple for the process of transformation. He lends his energy field, he lends his presence, he lends what he is and the moment the disciple attains to that, he withdraws that. This process we call as leaving the physical body. Firstly, the master, the vehicle that master was carrying on, the noor that was encased in the physical realm of body, mind and intellect has become irrelevant. It always happens the moment an individual att attains to enlightenment, his connection with the physical body is severed. There comes a gap between the two. Now he has to, because he has attained the ultimate beyond which there is nothing, a flower blossoms it has no intention of carrying on the life but it stays until it, its petals begin to drop and petal by petal the flower dissolves into the existence making way for the new foliage to come. Master does the same. Before he enters into the field according to the individual capacity of the seeker, he directs them to the master. He creates a riddle, creates a situation and you have to unravel that riddle that Master has given to you. I will send you because seekers were, did not know, they were lamenting that now the Master is leaving the world, what will happen to us? He said to them, I will direct you to another Master who will continue to be your guide along the path of inward journey. These are the mystical conspiracies of the Master. Because all the Masters operate at a level which is alame gap, beyond the body, beyond the mind and intellect. And at that level, they commune with other living Masters of the time. And through the communion, he directs the seekers to the living Master. But it has to be discovered by the seeker himself. Master gives the indications, gives the hints. Sometimes it is in the form of parable. Sometimes all of a sudden you stumble upon something which reminds you of the Master. You say, here I can go. And then as a confirmation, the message comes from the Master itself that this is the person, this is the living Master I have chosen for you.